morning everybody how's it going uh, first and foremost so don't forget because <laughs> I always seem to forget when it's too late but anyway I want to say thanks to everybody that's a patron currently of mine uh, and if you're not you can head on over to patreon.com slash shot director uh, but yeah, for everybody that is a patron, I appreciate you guys' support. Uh, every penny literally counts. Uh, it means a whole bunch. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys and ladies that uh, support me there. I do appreciate it. And if uh, you don't have any money to throw my way, which is, you know, I'm not coming at you guys with a hat in my hand. But if you guys like what I'm doing and stuff like that, uh, if you guys wouldn't mind giving it a share with your friends and stuff, uh, not not patreon necessarily but especially like jessup king or any web comics or the content i'm doing if you guys think that there's uh, some value there i'd appreciate like not even i don't even care about the likes but sharing it with people would be awesome i do appreciate that so thank you guys one and all and uh yeah so we're gonna be working on some jessup king how's it going ak nimrod good morning good morning 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 so We're going to be working on today, like I said, is uh, more Jessup King. We wrapped up, I took yesterday off, I was playing up, <laughs> I was playing probably an unhealthy amount of Friday the 13th, I think I streamed for like an hour or something like that, just just in case anybody was on and they wanted to play too. Uh, really casually fun game, it's not the most amazing thing, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I took the day off yesterday, did some of that. Uh, the day before, we worked on the breakdowns, which you can kind of see in the background here, of uh this panel. Uh, we got all three pages wrapped up. So what I'm looking to do today is to get all the line art done, possibly moving inks. And we'll, we'll see how this goes. Also nice trolling. Oh, <laughs> Thanks, man. All right. Let's get this set up over here. Never seen anybody troll you. <laughs> I remember watching a couple of videos. They showed up in my feed of like, uh, like tips and tricks against Jason and stuff like that. And I remember some stuff where you can. There's definitely some stuff you can set up to uh, make it a little easier for yourself. But the game's really tough when nobody's doing anything. Like if you're just walking around and you find stuff and then you die along the way, it's really hard to to win after that. Mr. Billy, how's it going? Huh? Hey, John, there's a page I'm working on, and uh, would think it'd be awesome if you could give feedback. No hard feelings if you can. You know what? What the hell? It's Sunday. Uh, if you want, email it to me, and we'll just do one. Or if you got like a link to it online, paste it in the chat, and uh, yeah, we'll do a super, super duper quick one. All right. Um, I saved myself this nice, juicy just a picture to draw. So let's, let's get into that. Yeah, the emojis are kind of creepy, eh? Any toxic players? No, you know what I think? That it, well, I don't think. I know. For me, the, the worst part of the game is when people team up with Chase and, like, it would be like you and I, we're, we're friends and we join up in games together, but then you or I or Jason it's like okay well now we can't be buddies or whatever right but we're in private chat anyway so what they end up doing is they end up just helping him and I've had people like attack me and stuff and just like it takes the fun out of the game that's what the most toxic stuff that I've gone against no problem brah I've talked about this before too with you guys. Um, if you guys are using a, well, for a, a Cintiq for me, but maybe this would work on a tablet as well. I'm zoomed out quite a bit. Let me see how it's coming through on the stream. Yeah, like it might look like I got a bigger screen, so I'm in there, but like I'm I'm zoomed out a, a lot, and I feel like even though this is like a simple brush, that I get a better quality out of it. Sometimes when I'm zoomed in too much, it just feels like I'm inking with like just a big black blob. So you guys should try that out. Maybe zoom out a little bit when you're drawing. Oh, 
Oh, actually, I wanted to read something with you guys. I'm going to write it down here just so I don't forget, because I'm probably going to be looking at your thing. Uh, Corey Lewis. I want to read something to you guys. Get your guys' feedback on it. What's the op Hey, Overpush, how's it going? Uh, Chris, how are you? Uh, so Over is asking, what is the optimal resolution for a webcomic? I don't, um, hmm, I don't, you know what it is, honestly, man, if, especially if it's a webcomic. Look if there's a specific site that you want to post to. Uh, if it's your own site, then it can be anything. Uh, but I would recommend checking out like Webtoons or Tapastic, and you can kind of see what their resolutions are, right? Because the page is on the screen, you could just right-click, copy, open up Manga Studio or Photoshop, paste it in, and, and then I would probably double or triple the resolution. So let's just say, for sake of argument, uh, it's Instagram, and it's a thousand by a thousand is what they post at. I know it's not, but just for this conversation. So you take that image, you go into Photoshop, you paste it in, it's a thousand by a thousand. I'd go up to three thousand by three thousand. Then you can start inking that way and coloring all that stuff because then you can shrink it down. If you're talking about paper, that's got some some actual stuff there too. Uh, Chris, I uh, have to say you've encouraged me to self-publish my comic book. Just started uh, character design since it's been... Oh, awesome, man. Awesome. Glad you started moving on some of that stuff. I wish you all the best. Nimrod's hoping to get a PS4 for Christmas. Oh, baby. We got a couple games we can play together. Okay, so um, while uh, Billy is is uh, getting his stuff together, let me just grab this thing because I wanted to read it to you guys. Uh... I saw it yesterday. Uh, let me just pull it out here. Okay, let's click that. All right, so I'm going to bring it on screen here. I'm not sure. You guys might be able to read it. doesn't really matter. I'm going to read it out loud to you. Um, Pretty sure there's no information on here. Okay, so uh, Corey Lewis is somebody I look up to. I've looked up to uh, since way back in the day of a forum that I've told you guys many times about uh, called eatpoo.com. It was like, I don't know how I found it, but this was like early 2000s, and it was a wonderful, it was before conceptart.org was even around. I don't even know if people go to that anymore. But anyway, um, Corey here, he had, uh, I think he went by the name of Ray back then, and he had, and has, in my opinion, still like, an amazing, amazing art style, and I, it's it's uh, it's not for everybody, but I dig it. Um, so he started. He just made a comic for for Image, for his own stuff called Sun Bakery, and what it is is it's more of like a, an anthology that he does. So imagine um, me making a comic book, and it's got three comics in it every month for you. Okay, it's got uh, some Jess of King, it's got some. Uh, God Slayer, and it's got some Castle uh, Dracula. Okay, let's just say it's that. And every month something new comes out, okay? So that's what that's what he decided to do, image, greenlit it, and all that stuff. So he made this post, and it was actually like, like look at this. Look at the amount of comments, man. Like, I was going through all of this, and it was, it's interesting. So he was saying, I got some pretty depressing numbers on Sun Bakery number three. Going to talk to image about options, but to be honest, not feeling super confident in comics in general lately. Strongly considering a new primary career and treating comics as an important non-making money hobby, which kind of rang a little true to me with Jessup here. Uh, I wish it weren't so. I'm trying to put my best foot forward with comics, but I don't know. Sun Bakery in general, I feel is a hard sell. Maybe I should pivot to just make Shark Knife. That's a com if you guys haven't read Shark Knife, I highly recommend it. Uh, and we'll see. So it kind of goes into a whole bunch of deep stuff. Not deep, but people are jumping around, and there's a lot of people that are all over the place like that. Um, but this comes on the heels of another... I'm, I won't be able to find it, but another post people were talking about uh, with, you know, the comics. And this comes and goes, so I guess it's really... You'll start to see it once, like, Marvel and DC especially start talking about it, I guess. Although they probably wouldn't. But, like, that the industry is starting to get into a little bit of a funk. Uh, and it's probably been there for a while. Some people, most people here, probably don't even read a lot of Marvel DC stuff. Uh, but regardless, it was just a uh, an interestingly timed Facebook post because if you guys remember, uh, or maybe some of you haven't been around here for a little while for the streams and stuff, but I've been talking about making a, I guess, more of a push, we'll say, f towards like uh, the bigger guys to see if I can get a job doing that kind of stuff just to experience it once in my life <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, 
but it's interesting. I, I don't give in to fear mongering, but I'm not I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie and say it's not concerning to hear this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, it's not sugar and rainbows. I know that for comics, it's never been that way. But it was just uh, interesting to hear that because I know Corey's style in particular. And again, I recommend you guys go check out his work. See if you like it. You might find something really fresh and unique there. Um, but it just sort of got the the you know the 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 bells kind of firing off, going, you know, uh oh, is is this the right decision? You know, it's it's one thing like Corey was saying, and I agree, uh, because it's been something with Jessup as well. Is you know I've got a job. It pays well enough that I can save and and all that stuff. And I'm not going to get to that. I'm not trying to gloat or anything like that. But a lot of people would probably get that the job I have and they'd be they'd be um they're fine you know they don't need to worry about other things and I don't know if it's just a comic thing with me or what the hell but I feel like I want more <laughs> you know there's more out there I know there's more out there um, but anyway so if I'm making the, the push to all that stuff um, what he was saying kind of rang true to me, where it's like, I have that job, that's fine, you know, just keep it, it's 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 a good job, there's nothing wrong with it, it's not, not a bad job, just keep it, and then come home and just, you know, spend time doing this stuff, and you never know where this goes, not that this might replace one day something, but having, a, I suppose one way to think about it is having like a day job that can keep a roof over your head, put money in the bank, put food in your belly, um, is, there's a certain level of comfort that comes with that, and possibly it lets you uh, or it gives you more time to do what you actually want to do. And I could see arguments for both there. But anyway, I just wanted to read that with you guys, see if you guys had any thoughts on anything, if, if, if that even brought up any thoughts or any questions like that. Uh, okay, thank you, Billy. Let me just copy that. Hopefully this works. Uh, I just want to catch up with some of you guys as well here real quick. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Dennis, how's it going? Uh, what's the current pixel resolution you're working on? Not DPI. Uh, okay, yeah. So remember, this is eight and a half by eleven, regular printer paper. This isn't like eleven by seventeen. Okay. So right now it is. Let's go to pixels. Fifty-one hundred or let's five thousand one hundred by six thousand six hundred. I'll just leave it on the screen here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Good morning, LG. Welcome, buddy. Hey, yeah, please do some live streams, man. Uh, they've been uh, very good to me. I mean, they make the work day go by so much easier, I'll tell you that. Uh, okay, so Billy's saying, need to add stuff, but no idea what to add. Okay, no problem. Uh, LG's saying, comic book industry is cynical. I, I believe that as well. Ups and downs. Remember the 90s? The entire industry was doomed. Some books are way better than others. I agree. No, you, and that's the thing too. I don't want to just say what he was saying was like the end all. It was just, it was interestingly timed. And of course, there could be a Kim Kardashian comic and it could blow up, right? You, nobody knows what the secret sauce is. Uh, but all of us creators would like to think and hope that our stuff is that secret sauce, right? So that definitely comes with a grain of salt too. Uh-huh. Uh, Overpusher saying, if you really want to make money, do some uh, fetish art and demon art. Yeah, well, that's the thing too. Yeah, there's always the I don't know, I was about to call it the underbelly, but it's not that. But the the stuff that we're told not to draw, you know, always always will be around um, to to make money off of. But that's the thing. If you're in it to make money, then you might go down that route possibly. Um, myself, I don't throw that route just because I feel like. I've got too many stories in my head to tell that don't involve that stuff, and if they don't make money, then, I mean, that sucks. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Just giving it a second. I don't... Hopefully you guys can hear me here. I don't know what part it cut me off at, but I don't know why uh, YouTube is just... It's been doing this lately where just the connection just dies. So I apologize. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. You guys can just let me know in the chat if you guys can't hear us. Uh, I just want to do it so I can't go oh, so I can say I never tried. You're only half failed. Yep. Well, the thing is, no, that's a good point. Somebody else had a comment on that AK as well on Corey's uh, post. Uh, pretty much being exactly that. That... Um, 
the newer generation of, of readers, we'll say kids, right? We want kids to be reading comics so that they grow up into adult comic readers, right? You don't want to just keep catering to adults. The thing is, a lot of kids, they'd rather, they don't want to read. <laughs> and I'm speaking in generalities here for sure, but I mean, at the same time, I would imagine that if it's up to me, I could play a video game. I could do, there's so many other things besides comics to keep your attention. Back in the day, and by the day, I mean late 90s, early 90s around there, when I was kind of reading comics, the internet wasn't even a thing, really, right? But I had video games and stuff. Okay, give me one second here. Okay, so this imager thing, I can't, it's not working. Uh, that link isn't working. Uh, let me just double check. Uh, imager.com. Yeah, www.imager.com slash A slash S I capital R U. That's not working. Uh, maybe you could hit me up with another link, man. So still streaming fine in your guys then? Okay, how's it going, chat? HTTP. Let's try that. Nope, nothing. Sorry, man. Ben is saying, I think you need to do something you'd like to read yourself or draw. If you're in it for the long haul and it's a personal project, please. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, if it's easier for you, uh, Mr. Billy, uh, you can email me at jonathanrector82 at gmail.com. Even with that link or whatever, and I can probably open it that way. <laughs> A little too much information there, over pusher. Okay, thanks, man. Should be able to read it that way. Hey Felipe, how's it going, buddy? LG saying commissions can make a lot of uh, can make good money, especially today that the collectors are moving from original pages to original commissions. I love that. <laughs> to be honest, man, is uh, as a digital artist, I love when people still want commissions, not pages necessarily. Although to be fair, I don't really have. Uh, well, you're not. Ju we're not just talking about me here, but yes, I, I agree, a hundred percent. It's nice. People are going back to the value of like an original piece. Not that a comic page isn't, but I think there's always something. If it was up to me, I'd rather get, unless the image was absolutely like stunning. In many cases it could be, but I'd rather get like an artist to draw something real cool. Like my own kind of thing would be nice. Uh, 
Lewis has a nice style. Oh, yeah, I dig it, man. I, again, I highly recommend, <clears throat> if you guys never heard of it, you go to Amazon, check out uh, Shark Knife. It's got, like, a nice feel of video game. Comic book style. It's very energetic, for sure. What's going on with this drawing here? Alright, let to adjust this up here. Thank you, Felipe. Hey Ed, how you doing? Uh, hi John, I just downloaded your brushes. Oh, thank you, appreciate that. Thank you for being a Patreon. Is it a, how would you guys say it? I always feel like I'm, every time I'm about to say it, my brain goes like 50-50 on me. It's like, should I call people like, oh, if, if you support my Patreon, are you one of my patrons? That's what I'm assuming. All right, that's a real thing, but hey, thanks for being a Patreon. I, it sounds odd to me, but anyway, thanks, I appreciate that. Uh, and you love them? I love the inking brush, but here we go. For comic pages, what size is the best? 40, 20? Okay, so here, um, I'll just give you an example. Uh, I, maybe, I don't know if I went over this. Is there a video that I attach with that stuff? I don't, maybe if there isn't, I'll have to go back and show you guys. But uh, the way that I'd, I've done this is, I let me know if you don't get brushes like this. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, if it's not, then I need to uh, update it for you guys. Uh, but if you notice on my brushes, they say 600 DPI. That's what I work at. Uh, so let's, here, let's do this. I'll go File, New, 
and I'll show you here. Uh, okay, so I guess I don't, yeah, 11 by 17. Okay, we'll go there. So here's a, a traditional comic page or comic board. So when I do uh, 600 DPI, that's because it affects the size of the brush based on the um, DPI, right? So I'll show you here. One here I have large inking. This would be my largest inking brush. This is only as thick as it gets, right? And as thin based on the pressure, right? Um, so if this was a 300 DPI image, actually here, let's give you an example. Let's go 300 DPI. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. Look at the size difference between the two, right? So you just have to know what it is that you like to work at. I work at 600 because my computer's comfortable with it uh, and I enjoy having a higher resolution image. But if you just wanna work 300 DPI, that is that is perfect. You don't need to go any higher than that. Uh, so back to 600. The brush here, if you notice, it's 70. That's because of the size here. Now, if I wanted to, to mirror the same size on a 300 DPI, I just reduce it by pretty much half. So what's half of 70? 35? So I would go down to like 35. Let's try it out here. I got to go in there, 35. Let's make a new layer here just to test this out. And we'll go back here. Now, if you notice, they're pretty much the same except I've got like some sharp angles here, but they're pretty much the same. So if you work at 300 DPI, just take all my 600 DPI brush brushes, go down here, brush size, and divide it by half. Uh, and make sure you click on this wrench button, that way it locks it to that size, so that even as you're organically drawing, if you need a thicker brush or a thinner brush, you can just like manually adjust it, but whenever you go back to it, it'll always be the right size. Okay, I hope that helps. If it doesn't, you let me know. If you need some clarification on another kind of brush, uh, I can, I can, uh, let you know about that too. Uh, okay, let me just check my email so we can do a little pretty, pretty, pretty inbox. There we go. Actually, if you send me the raw image, yeah, let's just use that. And I'm just gonna do a super quick critique here uh, with the understanding, or at least the way I'm coming at it, is how it reads, what's going on, clarity, um, and if there's anything to add, okay? Not style or anything like that. That's subjective stuff. Okay, so let's take a quick look EC. I just gotta zoom in a little bit and I'll zoom in for you guys, all right. So we got some people kind of walking. Uh, Columbus, Ohio, USA, tick, tick. Okay, tick tock, sorry. So, uh, I'm assuming this is downtown or, or something like that. Okay, so there's one critique I can give right away, uh, and you can let me know if maybe there's a story reason for that. But I just want to zoom in to show you guys. I like the tone work, it's nice, it helps makes it pop. Okay, cool. So, uh, this shot right here, I love it. Th this bottom shot, fantastic. I love everything about it. Uh, it's telling us a lot of information, obviously, the time. You even went as far as saying how hot it is outside, and this feels like a very, uh, I don't want to say manga style page, just in terms of one thing that I love about manga that I don't think enough American comics do, uh, for better or for worse, is they put you in a scene, in a place, in a time, and they can spend a lot of time there. So if it's, a good example is if it's school, and they want to show that it's boring, you're going to show a lot of panels like this, where it's time. Uh, here's a picture on a wall, there's a bird outside, right? Like, it's just stuff that puts you in a moment. I love that stuff. So the only real criticism I have um, even this this panel here is great. Uh, there's nothing really wrong here. The flag looks a little small, um, just in terms of like the size of an actual American flag. Uh, but that's that's whatever. Yeah, I, I mean, if a quick look at this stuff, it's good. Nothing nothing overly wrong. Uh, the people walk like the anatomy is a little weird. The anatomy is a little wonky. Uh, you know, it, th this is the thing. When you look at panels like this, they're very technical which is great. I don't know if you use 3D models or not, uh, but these are very technical and these look very, like they lack the depth. You know, like this, this, um, this right here, this group of legs, this group of legs, this person right here, in my opinion, is the best of the whole panel just because you're showing some depth um, and there's some cool stuff going on there. Uh, watch your wrinkles and stuff, right? Um, clothes don't normally fold or fall like this. Uh, but all in all, it's good. The only criticism I have, and um, you just let me know how this works, is 
There's people walking here with bricks, okay? To me, that insinuates that this is outside. The next panel we see is outside. There's not a single soul or a single building outside. So that's why I was saying I don't know the context of the story. If this is just saying there's people walking, uh, but there's nobody outside. If that's the case, then I would have to see page two to help me with that, right? And then again, even in panel three, you don't show anybody. Um, so I know why you're showing this, which is fine. Or at least I assume uh, what is fine with that. This one, you know, like, I don't know if there's supposed to be people around here. Like, these people that are walking, where are they? Where, Where is all the, the people here? Or maybe they're all dead. Maybe this is a zombie comic. I'm not sure, you know. So, other than that, I would say great page. Uh, besides just that one thing that, I, that I'm, I'm confused about. This, how does this lead into there? Um, also, I, I will point this out for everybody else because this is great. Um, and again, you have, what I would probably do is... Um, you want to lead people from here to here, right? But the way we have, you're going here, you're going this way, and something's got to come back down this way, right? So I would probably have, if you can do this, I don't know, it might be too late, but maybe in the future. You see how this person right here, they're walking? Maybe put them here, and then move these people over. That way, the motion is still going this way, because what you're doing right now, not that it's wrong, but you've got motion going this way and then you've got these two people going backwards so your eye goes back into it so it's almost like a, a loop which is fine because if this is just a lot of people walking through uh, a scene then that makes sense okay then you come down to this page which is great you got the uh, perspective coming down here to get your eye to move down which is great which is right here in this big negative space and then our eye goes over here perfect perfect layout so yeah i hope that helped you out Okay, uh, let's catch up with everybody else. Uh, Nimrod, John, uh, Eliza, and I have come to the fact that f for me right now, my art is more of a therapeutic hobby, uh, and I should take the stress. And pr hey, yeah, hey, absolutely, man. If uh, Like I've told you for a very long time, uh, Darren, if the sooner you can find out, and however, every, and this goes for everybody, the sooner you can find out what kind of artist you are inside, meaning not what you would like to be necessarily, but who you, you are. And if you don't know what kind of artist you are yet, you need to spend some time to figure it out. Meaning, do you want to make comics? Okay, and I'm just using that as an example. You want to be a comic book artist? Great. Do you want to make that a profession? Or do you still enjoy playing some video games, playing some Magic the Gathering, hanging out with friends, watching movies all night if you want? Because that sort of life leads into like the hobby style art. And again, that is okay. The sooner you realize which person you are, or currently anyway, um, and you're, you're happy with it, the rest of the world, <laughs> in my, it's been my experience anyway. Uh, everything else sort of just becomes like a... <sighs> a weight off your shoulders because now you don't have to go home from work and go, oh, I got to draw because I haven't drawn in a couple days, even though you know deep down inside this is just a fun hobby for you, right? And it also makes decisions easier. Let's say you want to uh, transition into making comics your full-time gig, then you know that means that you probably have to cut down on all the recreational stuff so that you can make time to make your comic, right? And that makes life easier as well because now you can plan easier things aren't always just sporadic and stuff so anyway i'm happy for you darren um there's no stress there's no pride loss in anything if somebody just says that deep down inside maybe one day they would like to be a full-time or like they want to do art but currently they can only do hobby style stuff there's nothing wrong with that at all is and i've always said this and i'll get off this and i'll, and I'll catch up to everybody else do what makes you happy especially in art I'm not trying to say something like sell you guys a book or anything, but life's too complicated as is. Art shouldn't be something that creates stress. There's no reason for it. We're lucky enough to be able to think about this. You and I, everybody in here, you guys, okay, man, woman, child, adult, whatever the hell, teen, preteen, pick whatever the hell you are, I don't care. Um, we get to look at a blank piece of paper or uh, a screen that's flat right? It's a flat object. And we get to become magicians just for a little bit, just for a little bit. We get to become magicians and create this, my example, this big muscle guy that makes no sense, no sense at all. But I get to create the harder I work and the more study I do to give people the illusion that what they're looking at is real. That is amazing. So if you want to take that and try to make it a business, or if you want to try to do that on if you want to draw your uh, portraits of family members and stuff, whatever you want to do, you already got it made. In my opinion, we already got it made. We're, we're lucky. We are all very lucky if you're an artist. Just because, and again, <laughs> the way I look at it, 
not too many there's a lot of people that start drawing when they're kids not everybody needs to be an artist but a lot of people draw and then life shows up and for whatever reason outside pressure whatever the hell they forget the fun and it's a lot of work but there's definitely fun and magic in creating unbelievable things you know okay that's a little wisdom for the <laughs> wisdom. All right, let's uh, catch up there. Uh, okay, cool. Ed, glad it helped you out, buddy. Uh, Spiritless Wolf, have you ever used acrylics? I used acrylics once in high school art, and I'm I don't like painting. I only honestly, if it wasn't for digital art, I probably I don't know the kind of artist I would be. I I imagine the romanticism of locking myself away for a little bit, getting some music going on, and you know, don't talk to me for a while while I create my art. <laughs> uh, but for me anyway, it's, you know, like I kind of, I, I'm going all over. You asked a simple question. I'm giving you, sorry, I apologize. No, not really. Not really. Uh, I have used MS Paint back in the day. Yes. Uh, Egmo, am I, am I saying that right? I'll just call you EG Gaming. How's it going, buddy? Uh, hey, guys, I'm a small, okay. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to reply to that. Um, thank you so much for that. I'll take up your advice. Glad to know I'm some other. Okay, hey, hey no problem, man. You keep keep doing it. You're doing good work. Uh, AK, I I wanted a comic draft. Need review? So yeah, go ahead. Send it to my email, buddy. Jonathan Rector eighty two at gmail dot com. You want to do pinups? Go ahead, man. Awesome. You could get. I think you could get a lot of uh, happiness out of that too. You get a lot of people. Not not necessarily people buying, but people interested in your work when you're doing a pinup. Really cool stuff. I think you'd gain. I think people gain a better fan base, not a better, but you'll gain a, a wider audience of people that could potentially like your stuff for pinups over comic pages for sure. Comic pages, they're they're boring unless you're you're in it. Uh, Billy, have you tried using vectors before? I know the files say. Uh, no, I, I. The there's a, a person that comes in the chat from time to time. He might already be in here. I don't know. Uh, Kevin Phillips. He he's uh he's an awesome guy. He sends me stuff all the time. Uh, and for a while, he was telling me about vectors and stuff. Like, I'm aware of vectors and that. I just don't understand the point of it myself for drawing. Uh, like, I know what vectors do. I just never have been in a, a position where I was like, damn, I wish this was a vector drawing instead. So maybe it's just a mix of I'm not sure what I'm missing out on uh, or anything like that. Like, to be fair, right? Like, I'm drawing this ink, it's the inked air quotes here, in 600 DPI. So, like... I don't know what the hell else I would ever need where this isn't big enough. Uh, that as well as like the way that I work, I can always go back and, and uh, adjust things or remove stuff fairly easy. But no, I, I've definitely heard of people that use a lot of vector stuff though. And a lot of people dig it. Um, but I also don't have like a very smooth art style either. I like a little bit of grit, like, like texture kind of stuff from time to time. So I don't really, not that, that you need that for vector, but. Hey, Linus, how's it going, buddy? I usually use the thicken up lines. Or okay, okay, I can see that.
what inspired the Dobbins? Um, so I'm a big fan of fantasy, and when I was well, when I was when I'm when I started doing Jessup King or whatever, uh, I didn't want to just do sci-fi. I'm not a big. I don't mind it, but like, if I had the choice, I'd rather go for Star Wars than Star Trek. If that makes sense. Uh, so that sort of led me down, going, okay, well, I, I, that means I want to. I've always wanted to have like goblins and elves and dwarves and stuff like fantasy stuff. Like, it, it, I'll I'll still one day before I die do some sort of comic. Well, I hope before I die, <laughs> some comic that is like high fantasy of of some sort. And uh, so anyway, so that's basically why they are the way they are in here. They're basically my little goblins. And even the name itself, right? Like, I'm not being super creative, just replacing the D with a G. Doblins, that's all it is. Just a little, like, nod to that. Uh, in a, cu a couple pages before, they want to get to Cyclops. A Cyclops Doblin, that's in there too. Uh, so that kind of stuff. Uh, there's definitely elves that'll be coming up. Elf kind of creatures, but just a little sci-fi spin to them. Uh, humans, dwarves, that kind of stuff too. So that's really just came back. Bring back the tablets. Uh, <laughs> maybe. type of fantasy John Dungeons and Dragons or JRPG type? Uh hmm. That's a good question. I'm a big fan of like Final Fantasy role playing games. Like Final Fantasy Six is my favorite role playing game. Uh I I enjoy the over the topness, but I think like I don't know how like high fantasy, but I don't know if it's like if I I maybe start drifting towards dark fantasy. So Dark Fantasy kind of gets into like I, I don't want to get into politics, but Dark Fantasy is always about like houses and clans and stuff like that and politics, you know. And the magic and stuff's not it's very subtle. I like that over the top explosions kind of stuff, but I don't know. I I I'm interested in that, and then I'm also interested in like the Battle Chaser side, right, where it's like uh, Final Fantasy meets superheroes. That's super exciting too. <laughs> You like the simple change from a goblin to a dolphin? Cool, man. Thanks. Glad you like it. 
All right, so I think Jessup's done here. So let's uh, close this all up. We're gonna break the panel with this one too. Just to make him feel like he's larger than the panel. Schwarzenegger's birthday today? Oh, that's sweet. 70 years old, eh? Damn. Uh, problem, sorry, for me is most sci fi is very military. Yeah. Have you ever, I don't know if you guys ever read, or if you guys read very many books, but I highly recommend one called Old Man's War. That was awesome. It's very sci fi mixed with a heavy military stuff. I thought it was great. But I, I know what you're saying. It's to me, like Battlestar Galactica is one of my favorite sci fi, I don't know, what would you call it? sci-fi shows sci-fi stories ever and it's very military but the characters man the characters make that stuff and the lore oh my gosh like i highly enjoyed it if you guys haven't read it i highly recommend it but or watch it not read it but when it comes to me making something like yeah i gravitate more towards you know less military stuff probably because i'm just not in that world i don't I don't know enough of it, you know, where I think a lot of these writers and stuff, maybe they grew up in a military background, like their father or their mother or somebody was in the military. Like my grandpa, he used to always read like a whole bunch of westerns and stuff. He was in the military and stuff. I think he just liked that outlaw kind of thing, you know. So, John, do you have a red Monica character come up for Jessup? Uh, maybe. Not over-the-top sexualized, though. No. I'm very against that. I'm very against making overly sexualized characters, unless they're men. <laughs> you know, like this guy right here, who wouldn't want to have that body? You know what I mean? But, like, not that I'm that there's anything wrong with it or whatever, but, you know. If I if the character was sexual or something and I had to like if she had like huge boobs and stuff like that because it helped the character or something like that then whatever if it helps the character but just to do it just to do it no I'd rather have you know that's why I like all these strong female characters in all these movies and stuff as a late But yes, I definitely have to have a female character coming up soon, besides Momo. I actually have to put in a few that look more humanoid, because all I've been drawing are like creatures lately, which is awesome. Trust me, I, I dig it. I wouldn't be drawn if I didn't like them. But, uh... We'll be getting into some, some different style stuff soon. Oh, you meant the, uh, <laughs> of course, right? Like I went right to the, her, her body type. Yeah. Like a, a strong independent kind of style woman. That's similar to Jessup kind of stuff. Uh, the old, Hey, galaxy is a big place. The galaxy is a big place. I always forget this. Let's get our reference up there. A female war machine. I don't know. M maybe Jessup's the only one. Hard to say.
Uh, Kila, is there some kind of reference map sheet of all your characters that's... <laughs> no, it is pretty smart. I'm just stupid enough not to have done it. Yes, I, I need to make something, yep. It's one thing I don't have on my site. I have to check it out. I don't know how to do it. If you guys know... Okay, if anybody in here knows... If you go to jessupking.com, it's a Tumblr site with... I forget the... Um, shit. The template or whatever it's called that you use to make the updates for the webcomic... I'm, I'm pretty sure inside there you can make like sub pages or something you click so if I put a button saying like meet the characters or something like that you click it and then it would be exactly like what Q-Lite's saying where there's like a you know something on there that tells you more about the characters because yes it's 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 past due that I should have done something like that for a while now right because there's not that many characters but there's enough characters in here that you know people would be maybe interested in and I don't know how many are actually going to be recurring characters here, but that's not the point. When I was uh, writing before for different stories and stuff, trying to come up with something, <laughs> I saw these, uh, I forget what they're called, uh, but I had one, and you install it on your machine, uh, and you can make your own wiki. And I, it was, <laughs> that you want to talk about world building? That was so fun. You could like write, I would write like a paragraph of like the dark times or the first war, right? And you're just writing, yeah, this is sweet. Excuse me. And then you jump back over to a character and you'd be like, okay, so, so, so. And then they met that character from that event. And then you could hyperlink it. So I could go through and see all these characters and they'd have like little like stories I could click and click. And it was, for me, it was cool. If you guys enjoy world building, it's, it was, it was real neat. Um, and it was great just to have. But I think it's kind of cool for those that are interested in it uh, and interested in, like, the story that you're creating. If there was, like, a wiki or something you could make. Or even very simple ones, such as this, like, a character sheet, you know? kind of species is Momo? Uh, she is a jubble. More made up words. <laughs> uh, I believe on page I think it, yeah they've already said it in the comic I believe. Yeah it was page let's see here. So when they met Mexiat for the first time. Right here I think. Yeah Mexiat's telling them what to do so he's like uh, telling one guy you know well done you got them. Indeed, very interesting. I saw your arrival the moment you broke atmosphere. Shame you were dumb enough to stay, especially since this is Doblin seized planet. Nonetheless, we always use new, fresh slaves. Gua, gua, gua. Worst kind of laugh ever. It's kind of like a Kafka laugh. I know it's. Not. <laughs> anyway. You serve me now. Your lives are now mine. Your hearts are now mine. And your souls are now mine. The smart mouthed Jubble will make digging the mines easier with her witchcraft until every flicker of her life is spent. The oversized mustache will delve deep, moving massive boulders until each of those muscles rip from those bones. The Tupo, I see, has had its slave collar removed. We will put her back in chains and put back to work once again. As for the Doblin Trader... Dun, dun, dun. Then you gotta have the most villain thing ever after that. We took his tongue. Now, his life we will take. You heard the king round him up... And then it keeps going, so, yeah. A jubble. Jubble, jubble, jubble. Okay, uh, do you write down characters' bios as you make your characters? Uh, nah, not really. Uh, like, I'll be up straight, uh, like up front and straight with you guys. Like, a good chunk of this stuff is written on the spot. 
Great example, literally page one. Um, they leave off the ship and... Uh, uh, one sec. Okay, uh, so an example here is like page one. Jessup and Momo leave the ship and uh, Jessup does his little quip ball, you know, let's get out and stretch. We've been in there for a while. Breathe it in, breathe it in all that fresh air. And she says, you know I don't breathe, yet you say that joke basically every single time, right? That line I just put in there as a quick joke, but then I was like, okay, cool. So now she doesn't breathe, <laughs> she doesn't need oxygen to live. That kind of stuff. They're, they're, they're tr like I have a, a plot for her and a plot for Jessup. Um, with some, with like, uh, I guess like a character in my mind. So like for Jessup, anytime I, I try to put dialogue for him, now it's a little different because he's getting serious, right? So I have to change him up. But on one con, on one side, I look at him as like a big teddy bear, uh, not not a father figure, but let's say a grandpa, right? Uh, more of a grandpa, big teddy bear. Uh, you know, he'll help you out. He'd always stand up for the weak, just like a Captain America, but you know, like a kid, a big softy. But then when he gets real, I, in my mind, I kind of write him like, almost like a villain. Like, I don't want to say Magneto or anything like that, just because he uses those kinds of abilities. But that kind of stuff where he's very stern. He knows exactly what's going to happen. There is no other outcome. What I say goes, that's it. Um, and there is no room for debate. Uh, and his act, he will, his will he will see to fruition kind of thing. Whereas Momo, I kind of think of her as like a preteen, teenage, spoiled brat kid. Um, not that all preteen girls are that way. I'm just saying, you got, you know what I'm talking about. There's those ones that are very entitled. Um, she's very powerful. She can cast a lot of, um, you guys don't know yet, you'll see. But high level magic is what she's using a lot of. Um, so she's powerful and she's way too young to understand that power. So she's very temperamental and stuff, right? So I write them that way. Um, and then sometimes, like I, like I tell you guys, I write the plots, and then when I come down to, when I do the plots for a page, sometimes I'll put in like a little sentence or like a couple words of dialogue that I think would be cool to have there, so I don't forget the, the emotion or something that I'm trying to say. But when it gets down to it, usually it's that day when I start doing the breakdowns and stuff, is when I'll write it out. So there's things that I'll learn and things that kind of, you know, come up as they go. I don't know if I recommend that, <laughs> recommend this workflow. Again, the main reason I did all this stuff, the way I'm doing it, is it was the only way to move forward and get the thing going. I get way too stuck on if I could sit back and plot every character and every everything, full script, all that stuff, it would probably be a better story, but I'm not developed enough as a writer in order to do that. Um, and th I would be crippled and paralyzed by that to the point where I couldn't really work on it. I would always be redoing drafts, redoing this, redoing all that stuff. So, if that helps you guys out at all. Space Lord, mother, mother. Hey, Batter, how's it going, buddy? All right, see you later, Nimrod. Have a good night. <laughs> Comic craft fonts are 50% off. Is that right? Well, let me just open that site up. Comic craft. Do, 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 do. Nope, it's not. I think this is the site where I bought uh, the ch the. Uh, I can't speak, you guys. I'm sorry. Where I bought the Joe Matarera font, I believe.
Felipe is doing the exact same thing I'm doing with the comics. Great, man. Yeah, do you find that it works for you? Like, uh, and to be, again, I, I, I feel like this way of working is very, not that it's right <laughs> or wrong, but it's, it's very artist. It's affected by an artist, right? Like, a writer obviously writes, but, like, for artists, for myself anyway, it's very hard to get what I mean across without showing a picture to sort of help, like, illustrate that kind of the thought and stuff. So sitting down and going page one, panel one, like, I lose it. I can't, I hate it because <laughs> I can't visualize it like a good writer can, where they can kind of, like, like, if I had to write a movie, I have no idea how I would do that. I would have to storyboard the living shit out of it. Like, it still blows my mind that people can go like, okay, so on this page, we're going to have Jessup fight this Dob or the Doblin King, right? So you're like, all right, well, how many pages? Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll just go, like, uh, panel one, uh, establishing shot, you know, blah, 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 panel two. Like, I, I can't stand it. I imagine a lot of writers, they have to be doing what I I do, where it's like you just write in, in bullet points, right? Like, Jessup says this, he attacks here, does that, kind of does that, next page, right? And then you look at it and you're like, all right, so how do I turn those into panels? And then you add your your, your wording and stuff. I, I, I really don't think it's, not that it's impossible, but it's so friggin' weird to do it any other way. You know, like, go, okay, I want five panels per page. Like, it's weird. Not that it's not, does anybody in here write like that? If you guys need examples, uh, just let me know and I can show you some for Jessup anyway. I try to read scripts sometimes, but I have trouble imagining it. Yep, same here. It's like you never know what is going to happen. You have like an idea, but the characters are taking. Yeah, no, you, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're right here. Okay, I'll just show you guys this here, okay? Uh, for people that are, um, you know, not able to make the stream. So let me just pull up what I do here. Okay, so I have, I, guys, I've got videos on this, uh, and I'm, again, I'm not going to try to move you guys to Patreon, but on Patreon, I do have some tutorials where I go a little more in depth with the stuff. If you guys are interested in that, you can check it out. But uh, the process, I do have videos on this again, meaning, um, so what I like to do with writing so far lately, and it's been great for me, is I use a free website thing called Trello, and on Trello, you can make little note cards, and what I do is I, I do what I do with you guys. I show you guys those three note cards, beginning, middle, and end. And then I put like, okay, what's the beginning, middle, and end of each of those? And that gives me, so I start with three note cards, then I get to three, six, nine, nine note cards. And that could be nine pages of a comic book right there, right? Uh, or I can keep going, and you can keep adding and, and uh, adding more beats, we'll call them, or note cards in between each page. So once I have all them, uh, I color code them uh, so that I can see red is action, let's say blue is story. So when I quickly look at it, I go, okay, this is a very story-driven um chapter or this is a very action driven right and then i get to go like okay you know put in some more action here because people are there's too many talking heads kind of thing so 
once I have those, then the next thing I do is I go into Google Drive. And the reason I do it on all these things instead of paper is this way I can sometimes use it on, on I'll be gross, you know. If you're on the toilet or whatever and you just want to uh, crank out some plots and stuff, you can do that. If you're out and about, you can do it there too. You get an idea. You can jam it out there real quick. Uh, so let's go to chapters. Um, docs. Okay. And then I do this right here. Okay. Uh, let me just scroll down to the page rat. Okay, so here you go. So page 48 right here, okay? So this is what we're doing right now. This is what I did. This right here, this first sentence, Momo uses magic against Goblin King. Uh, see, I even put Goblin, not even Dollar. Goblin King breaks his scepter. That's the plot of this page. So then what I do is I put these little, like, point forms of, like, what do I think? Okay, so how do I, what, what else could I do to describe that, Momo using magic? So I go, Momo takes the fallen staff. Um, she, what is that? She leans over Mexiat and tells him it's over. Mexiat screams. A large show, uh, shadow over Mexiat stops his screaming. Jessup looking scary. Your kind has always been a pest in the galaxy, but you all work for contracts. Who and why are you here? Tell us and we will let you go. Um, so that's like just ideas that I had. So then what I do after that is right here. I just want to scroll so you guys can see it. I, now this is where I would do the, in air quotes here, the, the script, okay? So panel one, I don't write what we see because I kind of have it up here already. And I take this and I put like a, th I, I apologize, I skipped a step. Once I have these little like um, uh, bullet points, that's when I make my thumbnail off of this stuff, okay? So then when I have the thumbnail, I can go back here and write the script, which would be the dialogue. I don't really care about what it looks like. Uh, you know, I'm not writing like panel one. Jessup leans over because I've already done it in the thumbnail. Okay. So then I go like panel one. Uh, the reason us jubbles haven't been purged from the galaxy, Max, yet is because we know the value of making friends. So that's what she's saying. Um, so she shoots him and says, you know, you stay down, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, I'll never stay dead. And then Jessup saying, it's over, Doblin. So there's lines I cut out there. All that whole thing of Jessup saying, your kind has always been a pest. I removed it. I felt like that was maybe uh, too aggressive for Jessup right uh, Momo takes the staff and she leans over him and tells him it's over I switch that up too she's talking to him and all that stuff so I'll show you if you guys look this is what we ended up changing to right so she's right here and she says right there the reason those jubbles or whatever she shoots some electricity that we saw earlier in the comic blast him now stay down and right here I'm trying anyway to show that the staff is in the air and she snatches it in the air and then he's down there saying I'll never stay down but I can put the giant shadow over him here still and then we get this so that that's basically the process that I'm currently using, anyway. This page is done now. Whatever, home right after school. And we'll... Cool. All right, let's save that up and I'll do the next page. Uh, no matter what, I was just kind of showing the process of what I, what it takes to get, not what it takes, <laughs> what I do to, I guess, write um, per page. That makes sense. Okay, so we got our breakdowns. Let's uh, turn that red.
have to. <laughs> Trust me, draw monsters and big muscle men instead. It's easier. Man, so I got all the sniffles today, guys. It's like when I wake up hearing neighbors mowing lawns and stuff, I'm like, that's today. That's good. <laughs> Sniffle fest. Oh no, trust me. I'm fully aware I'm telling you to take the easy way out. How's it going, Randy? Thanks for popping in, bud.
was talking about my <laughs> my art puberty. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, we'll see if anything comes from it, you know what I mean?
sorry, matter what were you saying there? Uh, never realized you were going through those feelings. <laughs> From the outside looking in, you seem confident about your work skills uh, yourself, though you hadn't broken in because you just wanted to do your thing. Uh, so basically, Jessup King, you made you realize you could do it. Um, yes and no. Parts of those are correct, yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, I was in the boat. I made There was a decision I made probably a year and a year and a half ago after I was talking to Will and stuff. I'm well, not just talking to Will, but other people. And uh, I was at another crossroads. I think a lot of people come up with those where it was the crossroad for me at the time was do I either want to make my own shit or do I want to go work for another company, you know, like a Marvel DC. And to me, it was like, you know what? There, both those avenues can and probably will at some point uh, merge and deviate from each other. Meaning you start one, you might get into the other uh, or do one and it'll help the other, that kind of stuff. So I made the decision to just go with my own stuff. Only because I knew that, and I still believe this too, is that you we should all be making our own stuff no matter what. Uh, because what you make could turn into something, right? And it's yours and it'll always be there. Whether it's good or bad, it'll always be there. You can build off it, whatever. Um, but it's it gains a uh, foundation and some pillars that you won't wouldn't get from the other thing. So if you're making your own comic, yeah, you know, you don't get the big distribution thing that you would with working with like a big company. Uh, and it's characters that nobody knows about, most likely, so people don't care as much. Uh, but if you can curate some fans of your stuff, they might follow you wherever you go. Um, and then you might get a whole fan base that likes what you do, right? So there's a lot of avenues there. Um, the, the big publisher stuff, obviously, if you work there, you get this in air quotes here for some reason some clout you know like oh you are actually worth checking out because big publishers you know signed you on for stuff and, and I agree disagree with some of that stuff but you know that's the way the world works it's like awards and stuff they're pretty meaningless they might feel good but like just because none of I don't think anybody in here has ever gotten an Eisner award doesn't mean your storytelling is not good right there's just so much out there to check out. But anyway, just to go with your saying. Uh, so that was mixed with that. Mixed with the... Uh, the I Like, I felt like I w I've been ready for a very long time, to be honest with you. I've just never given it that push. I've never sat down to do... Not once. Like, even a three-page Spider-Man pitch. You know? And I'm still not, do still not doing that. I'm doing Jessup. And then this client project that I picked on... Or picked up. I should be starting... A, I think it's August. And the reason I keep doing that is if I get paid to do something, it's very similar to what I would send to them to those companies anyway. So you may as well get paid for it, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that's wrong. And even if I, even if they see something they like in what I send, chances are they might want you to do a sample anyway, right? So, and I could be wrong on that. I'm not sure. But anyway, thanks, man. I appreciate you. You're looking into a little bit more what I was saying there.
sometimes it's it's pretty confusing to look at. So <laughs> getting mind effed just looking at some of this stuff.
I'll try doing this with like his mustache.
Whoops, that's not going to work.
one last check. Cool. One more page. We got our line art done, and then I'm. I know the next one's gonna be a little bit heavier. Uh, there's a lot more characters. It's it's a lot of doblins running around. Uh, so we'll see how long that takes. I'm hoping we can get into some inking because this is going pretty quick. Let's just get it all set up. There's a couple page or panels I put in there that are similar to this page where it's just close-ups and stuff, just to speed it along. Right. So you can see this top panel take a little bit longer because there's a lot more characters here. Uh, this panel is very similar to the to this one. A little different of an angle. We've got a couple characters running, and then it's should be <laughs> quick, quicker going. Is that? It's not even English. Okay, so let's get this all prepared. Let's make sure everything is good. Okay, we don't need our thumbnail there. I don't think. Go to heavy metal. This we're gonna have to keep, so I'll put it up here. All right, so let's delete our thumbnail there. We don't need that. Let's merge all of this together. Run our action. One, two, three, four, five. Page fifty, damn. Okay, I'm gonna be right back. I just gotta grab some water, you guys. And I will see you in a, in a minute or two. And if you guys also, uh, if you guys have any questions or need any help with anything, by all means, jam them in the chat. And I'll do my best to answer them for you when I get back, okay?
Okay, we're back. Oh shit, sorry guys here. Let me uh I was wondering, I'm like the the chat just died for me like a good twenty minutes ago. You guys have been talking this entire time. Sorry <laughs> I said refresh just to make sure. Okay, sorry. Uh let me just catch up what you guys are saying there. Thanks guys. Uh okay, so this is going all the way back from before. Yes, uh you're right. Uh AK saying you should at least try it once because you might regret it. Uh that you know what, dude? That's um you're right on right on track that's what i was telling my girlfriend when i was uh you know trying to it's i can usually come up with decisions <laughs> on my own but like everybody else it's good from time to time to bounce an idea off and, and exactly i don't want to be 80 years old if i lived that old you know and my my wrists all snapped up and i can't draw anymore and just be like i wonder what life would have been like if if i had tried to work with one of those companies you know what i mean so <laughs> yep, you're right. Uh, the quote from Gretzky applies to everything. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yeah, that's right. I like it. It's simple. It's clean. A uh, bat fan. If you only sat down and concentrated on doing comic books solely, how many pages could you do in a day? Just pencil and inks. How many? I. You know what? If let's. It depends what's on the page. Okay. It depends what's on the page. If it's like, if it's this page here. You know, where really it's just close-up shots, right? And one panel that's, and I consider this to be a little bit more complex just because there's, you know, more than one character and there's backgrounds and stuff. And the background here is just sloppy background stuff. It's not even like a city. I bet I could do two pages. Maybe two and a half if it's this simple stuff, if that's all I had to do. And again, this isn't 11 by 17 either, so there's even more real estate on those pages too. Monochrome, how's it going? How's hey, everybody that's new here too that I didn't say hi. Uh, thanks, Monochrome. Appreciate that, dude. Uh, okay, I don't know if you're still here, Monochrome, but um, again, sorry guys, the chat was screwed on my end. Uh, on your pages, you have some cool textures with your colors. What brush is that, or is that a texture? It's, it's just a, a texture. It looks like this. Here, I'll show you. I just put it over everything when I'm done. I'll turn everything off just for those, and I'll, that way you can see them. See? It just looks like white paper. Uh, so let's change this to like a gray so you can see it. Okay, so these are the two. The first one is it's a, a soft light, like um, paper static kind of texture. And then the second one is... I guess it's on divide. I don't know why, but it just lightens it up. So the idea here is, to me anyway, it's hopefully to add uh, like a like a literal paper texture. It might be too much. I know some people have been saying that lately that they don't like it, which uh, you know I've, that's fine. I'm not gonna get butt hurt about it. Um, but it adds like a paper texture to it that I that I enjoy. So that's what I, I add to it, and that's <laughs> the only reason it's there. Hey Drax, how's it going? Cowboy sombrero, that's tough. That is some tough stuff.
No, I, <laughs> I the, the feedback I hear about the texture is that it's uh, either it, they feel like it darkens up the image or something, even though it actually lightens it up. Um, some people think it's too much. They like the clean look better. It's mostly just a preference, right? It's not.
uh, Batfan is asking, John, are you still plotting the comic as you go, or do you already have in mind what the next pages will be about? How far ahead are you in the story before you start drawing? Uh, I have the... So I plot before I do it. Um, okay, so I have... I guess there's two ways of talking about the plot. One is like the overall arc. So I know how, I know how this story started, obviously, and I know what the last story will be. And I know the middle part, so I know what hap. You know what I mean. So the beginning, middle, and end, I know that. How long it takes to get to those? That's the web comic fun part. <laughs> uh, you know, if I just want to end the story, we could just go through it right away, or I can have some fun along the way and just plug in. The way, okay, think of it this way. This is the way I tried to plot it. Was um, like a, a series of let's say X Files. So if you watch a, a season of X Files, it'll start with let's say it's the alien stuff. Are aliens real, and is the government hiding them? So the first episode will probably be about that, right? It'll say, like, oh, God, was that a UFO? Like, it'll plant that. Uh, the last episode will be them trying to figure out, okay, is it legit, right? And then the middle episode, somewhere in the season, will be, again, more alien stuff. And there might be a couple more episodes within there that have that stuff. I'm just trying to keep it simple for you. All the ep other, 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 all the other episodes are called what I call them. Um, I don't even know if this is. I heard this somewhere else or not. But monster of the week episodes where they could go against, uh, you know, like an invisible man, a poltergeist, a possessed child, more government stuff, right? Uh, but usually in those episodes, it's more character driven. So it makes you care about the characters more. Whereas the alien stuff is more so plot, okay? So if you think about it that way, that's how I have this structured. So the plot, like the beginning, middle, and end of this comic book series, I have done. And I have some plots, like, and they could be ideas, like, uh, I, I have one where I still want Jessup to be in a video game tournament. I know that sounds fucked. I don't know how that gets played in there, but it's plugged in there somewhere to eventually do a, sh a story on that. Uh, and that sort of stuff. So I can plug it in there, and it's more character uh, kind of stuff. And uh, so those I'll plot before I do the comic. Like when I like right now, once this one's done, I already have the next one plotted. Uh, it's a much like I say going forward, they're not going to be 50 page epics anymore. Uh, so far, anyway, uh, they're going to be a lot more condensed, little like scenes of a story, scenes of a show, we'll say. Uh, so they're going to be going along those lines with that. But yes, yeah, so I have the next one plotted. Um, but I, I I do the writing and all that uh, once we once we sit down to do it. If that, <laughs> I hope that makes sense anyway.
okay. Uh, John, do you have character arcs for each of your characters? Uh, hmm. Yes and no. I mean, they're both tied in. Okay, so this is what I did. Um, I guess, well, it's probably spoilers or whatever, but, you know. So, the beginning is very much about Jessup and Momo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so the the story is about right. Like I'll just tell you again. Remember, Jessup King is the story of an exiled princess who befriends a decommissioned war machine as they adventure through the galaxy. So it's a story about these two characters, right? Uh, primarily focused on Jessup, but that's what the story is about. So the beginning is about those two characters, and the end will be about those two characters. The middle is also about those two characters, but stuff happens, uh, obviously. Uh, that drives the story in a certain direction because of those characters, those like Jessup and Momo's story arcs. Um, and, and again, I, I would like to have this all done within a year so everybody could read it all, you know, but if we'll ever get there, we'll ever get there. If not, I'm sure I'll reveal to you one guys what I had intended for it. But yes, it's sort of intertwined. Again, um, there, I don't think there's a steadfast rule saying what you should... There's things you probably could do to make the story better and stuff i just want to reiterate for you guys and girls that are listening if you're trying to do what i'm doing here is please take with a grain of salt the entire process that i've done here is the goal of it is to make pages not necessarily tell the best story so i'm going more along the lines of whatever's going to get me drawing quicker as opposed to the story being tight so that means there's definitely going to be loopholes and stuff that I've forgotten about or that I've written or drawn and it's like what happened to that and I'm like ah, shit I forgot you know I'll do my best to not have that happen but that's what happens when you're kind of doing the seat of your pants writing uh, and plot driven stuff in my opinion just to make sure you're getting pages going you know so for better or for worse
can never get that. Do you have the action man? I can sh maybe I can show you how to how to get it to work, or are you doing it yourself? Hell yeah, I got it. Okay, so um, can you describe to me when you when you play the action, what happens? Does it make the the line art thicker? <laughs> cool, thanks, man. Because I can fix it up for you right now. Because that's it's like a deal breaker stuff. That's like one of the best things about the whole action thing, right? The reason I ask is if you press a button and the line seems like it gets thicker, I'll explain to you why that's happening. Um, if not, then we'll try to, or if you want, if that's not what's cause or what's happening, you can kind of describe when you press it what happens. I'll get it sorted out for you. basically makes an outline of the lines. Okay, yeah, so this is what's happening. Check it out. It did it here too for this one. Okay, do you see this character, how he's got the nice outline around him? Then all of a sudden, look how thick this gets, right? And then when I draw something, um, it'll go through it like that. So the reason that's happening is because, let's try to find him right here. This is why it's happening, and just check it out uh, for your own for your own reason. You see this hole <laughs> that's in the artwork? That's what's causing it. That's it. That's the only reason. So check it out. If I use my, if I just go like that to close the lines, you're good. So uh, the only w uh, way this might get a little awkward is you can adjust the area scaling because you can see like his hands open, but See, it closed that gap right there, even though there's no line art. So you can adjust that in case your lines, you have a more open line art style than I do. Or, what I found to help as well, it might be a little tedious. Hey, Calvin. Uh, is you just make an additional layer and you fill in those gaps that you normally have in your artwork with white. Or just, or even do this. This will work too. So let me just make a new file I'll show you. So let's say uh, I draw with an inky style, an inky style, <laughs> right? So let's say, I don't know, we'll do like a, a face or something. And that will get some. Let's say this is how I draw. Whatever. Okay. So when I use my wand tool to do the action here, what should happen is, yeah, you see now it looks like this. So if I run the action and you do it, all that happened was the lines got thicker. So when I uh, do this, let's say, right, like there's certain parts that are, are knocked out here. So what you can do again is you can try this. 
is I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to draw in white underneath my inks, if you notice. Okay, so my inks are here. Oops, let's turn off that layer. So my inks are this layer. I made a layer under it, and all I'm doing is sometimes it's a little hard to see, so I you can uh, change the line art to like a a white, and then it turns red, right? So you can kind of make your selections this way as well. All right, so that should be good. So now if I use my wand tool, you'll see it'll select outside of that. second okay there we go I'm gonna run my action and you can just turn off that white layer right and you'll see what happens is sometimes you do get like this sort of closed line when you ink over top of it or whatever you can get rid of it right or do this right like that layer we just made turn it white and it gets rid of it that way when we turn it back on it still cuts through okay or the last thing you could do um, this one's a little bit of anno a little annoying to be honest but you just use your lasso tool and what you're going to want to do is grab your lasso itself and just if you don't know how to like shift or alt to add selections right so I'm just holding shift here to add to the selection now why this sucks is because if you got imagine if you got a an image that's uh, very complicated going in here and doing all of this this seems tedious I hate it So long story short, <laughs> make sure all your lines are closed when you run this path or this action. That way you can get the look you kind of want, okay? And then ink over top of it to get the white if, out of it if you wanted, if that makes sense. Just give me one second, you guys.
should be good. Uh, and then, all right, let me try those. Hey, yeah, and no, <laughs> live tech support. Right? The good thing is that it creates a new layer, so if it goes wrong, you can just delete it, and it's not strong. I think the alt lasso did the Okay, cool, yeah. Um, I, I will say, too, like, the actions, or not the actions, but the one Freddy does for Photoshop that he sells, uh, I adjusted that one when I was using Photoshop 2. So when he makes a contour layer, it does the same thing. It makes a layer uh, that has that contour layer on it. But what I like doing is just being able to select that contour layer, right? Uh, let's try to find it here. All right, you can select that contour layer, and then, like, before you get into inking, right, you can make it as big as you want, right? Like, like how thick that is. Like, obviously, that's way too thick, but just being able to have that control of how big you want the contour layer to be, I, I like it. It's a big win for me. Oh, cool. It's always interesting hearing what, like, you guys use the most. Like, I know we all use the same kind of stuff for the most part, but. Because I actually don't use that beef up line weight or thin line weight really at all, unless it's like a 3D model, for usually. But I, I understand it for sure. It's cool. Can it improve the quality of a 72 DPI to 300? Uh, not, I don't think the KO one will, but like the, if you're to, here, I'll show you. If you're talking about the beef up line art, I'll show you what that would look like. I don't think it's going to look very good. I mean, you can only use that stuff to a, like for a certain, like a certain range. Right, like there is a point where it just becomes there's nothing you could do about it, right? So let's do um let's grab some liner. Actually here, I'm doing liner. Let's grab panel one here, right? So I'll paste it in here. Alright, so you can see this stuff is massive. Oops. Let's uh rasterize that. Merge layers. Whoops. Sorry, one second here. There, combine select. Alright, so shrink this down to pretend I drew this at 72 dpi. Okay, so let's say I drew this at 72 dpi, right? I'm going to go edit, 
compare brightness to opacity to make sure it's transparent. Let me change it to gray. All right, so I don't know how this works here. Change image resolution, yeah. So let's bring this up to 300 DPI. And this is gonna look, I mean, it, it's fine. There's a lot of like green, I guess. Actually, let's do it the right way. Let's undo and go edit, change canvas size. Damn, you can't. Hmm. See, Photoshop, you could change the actual size without doing this. All right, well, let's do this. Let's see. Let's see if we can sharpen it up. So if I select that layer, let's try. Um, let's go 300 DPI. Uh, thin the line weights, possibly. Yeah, I don't like that. Maybe we can go to. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Beefing it up, I don't think it's gonna look very good, but and then maybe go to monochrome. I mean you could noodle with it, it doesn't look the worst, but in comparison if I was inking over top of this. Right, like you could ink it to the point where you wouldn't be able to tell for sure. I think anyway. Oh, good, good. <clears throat> Man. All right, on to the next one. See you, AK. Enjoy your day, buddy.
you and I both, Calvin. Actions are the best investment I made in the past. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Glad you're getting lots of use out of them.
getting there. We're in the last little stretches here. Hey. Okay. <laughs> this is so much work. <sighs> Fuck. Alright, let's draw these dudes. I'll be right back again, guys.
Alright, we're back. Hey Lost Echo, how's it going? Uh, Jonathan, I forgot, what is the name of the program you're using to keep your character ref images in uh, one place? Oh, um, this is called Image Ref. I think it is. No, Pure Ref. Here, one sec. I'll get you the link. Pure Ref. I believe it's free. Uh, you can donate whatever you want. It's one of those pay as you as you feel it deserves kind of things. So, I I've paid for it. I forget what I think I paid five, maybe ten bucks for it. I don't know. Again, if you got nothing, it's cool too. Yeah, no, you're right, Matador. That's the that's the thing. Some of the brushes I have tilt turned on. Uh, I'm not even sure if it matters. I think maybe I just forgot to turn them off. I'm not sure, but yes, you're you're right. You should probably do something about that, eh?
sounds that sounds right. Sounds about right, man.
these next two panels should be done 10 15 minutes maybe uh, and then I'm going to call it for the stream I need to eat <laughs> uh, and then I should be back a little bit later today to ink if not it's all cool uh, let's get this in here for the last little little thing here uh, if you guys are interested got some prints for sale and uh, they should just be on like a, a slideshow here so you guys can see those uh, if you're interested interested in picking any up uh, I got a brand new print put up in the shop a couple or a few days ago now uh, the venom uh, which you might see on your screen at some point here uh, if you're interested there's a uh, links in the description below or just go to my website and uh, head on over to Etsy that's where you can order prints and all that cool stuff uh, somebody asked me as well about them uh, Let's say you wanted to, it's like a $10 print and you wanted to go to the US. I think it's like $10 shipping. Uh, sadly, I can't lower that any more than it is. However, if you do buy more prints, the shipping cost, I think it's like an extra dollar. Um, so if there's a couple prints you're interested in picking up, uh, that is how you could save some cash with that. But anyway, thanks guys if you're interested in that. All right, let's uh, keep this going here. We're almost done.
Kevin, how you doing, man? That's it for now. <laughs> I was going to say it today. I went to jump the gun there. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate your time and all of your support. Uh, if uh, you're new to the channel, feel free to hit like or subscribe if you think that's uh, something you like. Or, and or it would even help so a lot is uh, sharing it with your friends and your, your buddies and your homies and all that stuff like that. So anyway, I appreciate your time once again. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend, you guys, wherever you're at, or if you're watching this again in the recording version, uh, whatever you're working on, I hope it's the best, and I hope it turns out well, um, and I will see you guys hopefully later today, if not, you'll definitely uh, see me soon. So, okay guys, take care, and uh, like usual, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.